now let's see how to multiply two determinants uh, just like how we multiply two matrices we can determine we can multiply two determinants also see this if this is one determinant let's call it delta 1 a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 this is delta 1 and let us say this is other determinant let's call it as delta 2 it is alpha 1 beta 1 gamma 1 alpha 2 beta 2 gamma 2 alpha 3 beta 3 gamma 3 now i want to multiply these two these two determinants delta 1 and delta 2 just like how we do uh, matrix multiplication that uh, row by column rule right so we are going to apply row by column rule take the first row and the first column and you multiply the corresponding terms and you write it here and again take the first row and the second column and multiply the corresponding values and you write there first row third column multiply the corresponding values and you write there second row first column multiply them and write there second row second column multiply them corresponding elements and you write there second row third column right similarly third row first column right here third row second column right here third row third column right here so this is called as row by column multiplication it is it is exactly the same way how we multiply the matrices right now one interesting thing is we know that if a is a matrix and if you transpose the matrix the determinant is not going to change or the value of the determinant if i interchange rows and columns is not going to change which means instead of taking delta 2 you could have taken the transpose of delta 2 which means you could write a1 alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 like that right in case if you replace it with alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 then delta 2 doesn't change isn't it then you can perform the same multiplication then it will look like this okay see this what i am trying to say is this one we know that this one is equal to this alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 beta 1 follow it carefully it is important beta 3 gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 we already know that the determinant doesn't change by taking the transpose which means the value of this determinant and the value of this determinant both are same right therefore in place of this we can place this and we can apply row by column multiplication now when we apply row by column multiplication to this one right this one and this one if i multiply these two uh, determinants that one and this one then what is the value that we get if i apply these two delta 1 multiplied with delta 2 this one multiplied with this one row by column then we get first row a1 and first first column alpha 1 plus b1 beta 1 plus c1 gamma 1 now observe this so here the first value i got is different from this one right but then if you observe it it is similar to multiplying row by row for this are you getting this even if you take row by column multiplication and you got this determinant and you can even take row by row multiplication and you can get the determinant and the value of this determinant and this determinant will be same so what i mean to say from this by by writing like this or by proving this what i mean to say is you need not only go with row by column multiplication you could even go with row by row multiplication now row by row multiplication is same as row by column multiplication with the transpose of it since these two are equal row by column multiplication will convert to row by to row multiplication of this which is also going to give you the same value that is interesting even though the elements look different the final value of the determinant after simple equation will be same either you follow row by column multiplication or row by row multiplication interestingly you can even take the you know uh, transpose of this and then you can call it as column by column multiplication call row by row multiplication okay don't get confused when you have two determinants if you are trying to apply multiplication of these two determinants you can either go 
row by column multiplication row by column multiplication means first row first column first row second column first row third column that way or row by row multiplication or column by row multiplication or column by column multiplication whatever order you follow the final value of the determinant is not going to change the way the elements look they may be different the way the elements the arrangement of the elements or the elements themselves might look different but the final answer of the the final value of the determinant that will remain the same i think you are getting it okay so what i mean to say is if you have a determ product of two determinants you can evaluate it any way you like either you follow any of these four why it is significant is again when you try to write it back generally what happens is sometimes we will try to write a determinant as product of two determinants in order to simplify some questions in that case when you are taking uh, you know this one and when you are trying to write it back then it will be useful it, it will be useful to know that you could you could use any of these methods right when you are applying multiplication you can choose one of them and you can uh, you know go ahead and multiply them but then when you are trying to write it back which means when you are trying to express a determinant as a product of two determinants then how do you separate the elements that is interesting right okay so this is just uh, i have shown you the multiplication of 3 by 3 uh, determinants multiplications of order 3 it can be extended to order 4 order 5 or in general order n the same rules can be applied right and now you, you have seen that you have observed that when you have uh, sum of three terms now each term is a product of two terms you could again write it back like this okay with example it will be clear don't worry here you just understand that this is these four rules can be applied in order to multiply two uh, determinants later with lots of examples i'll make this point clear as clear as possible okay we shall do lots of examples on this till you understand this concept right if you didn't understand this don't worry about it it is just the theory with examples the things will be very clear okay hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits university is better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iits put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and iit roorkee's ranking is 400 if you are happy to get into iit roorkee then getting into university is better than iit roorkee is easier compared to getting into iit roorkee and looking at the salaries for computer science of uh, for software jobs if you have done your masters in computer science in us the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year so even if you take an average of 1 crore per year your savings will be much higher than the salaries in india after taxes and your cost of living you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year and in india the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs so your savings will be much greater than the salaries in india and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then lor guidance and gre and english test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral Which which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for ten lakh universities, twenty lakh universities, or fifty lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan, and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it after you get a job. And then we do. visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join the mo visas so the answer is we have 90% success rate 99% success rate and these are all the destinations that we guide the students to so we guide students to any country that you want to go so now it is not just usa we guide to uk germany australia 
Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number nine four nine four triple five four five four. Okay, thank you.